Today we talk about the HP prime and complex numbers, or rather, how to write a system of equations where the coefficients are complex numbers. If you're in electrical engineering, this is perfect for you. I will use as an excuse to explore the HP prime, solving a system of equations with complex numbers, an AC steady state circuit, this one. But if you're not into electrical engineering, it doesn't matter. Just take the system of equations that appear and uh, we solve it uh, that way and apply that to your own specialty. In this case, the voltage source up here has a value that is a complex number, 40 with 25 degrees. Those are volts, of course. And the current source at the top is 10 amps RMS value with 65 degrees. RMS, yes, I am using IEEE standard RMS power industry phasers. If you're using peak values, that's fine, but keep in, in, in mind that you are computing peak values. And the values of the passive elements, well, R1 is 2 ohms, R2 over here is 4 ohms, and the reactive elements are given by their impedances. The impedance of the capacitor in this case is negative J2 ohms. J? J who? Well, in electrical engineering, the imaginary unit, the one that mathematicians call I, cannot be called I, because I in electrical engineering, of course, is current. So we call the imaginary unit J. So this is negative J2 ohms. And the impedance of the inductor here is J ohms. We're almost ready. Who is alpha? Alpha is a coefficient of this controlled uh, current source and value is 2. The nodes are chosen like so. Reference node at the bottom, node 1, node 2. Branch currents chosen with those directions, and we write uh, then the m &A equation. CTL1, uh, the control current, high x, is just V1 divided by the impedance of the capacitor, negative J2. KCL1, that is KCL for this node here, current is going in only 1. Vs minus V1 divided by 2. That's equal to the currents leaving the node that is Ix, Is, and this one in this branch, V1 minus V2, over the impedance of the inductor, that is J. KCL2, currents going in, 2. The one on the top, Is. The one on the bottom, 2 times Ix. And, uh, oh, there's a third one, V1 minus V2 divided by J, the impedance of the inductor. And that is equal to the only one solitary current leaving O2, which is V2, divided by 4 ohms. We're ready. Let's uh, work on the calculator. The first thing I'm going to do is define who is J. J is 0, 1 in rectangular mode. Square that to check. Square of J is negative 1. Absolutely. Now we're ready. We begin establishing what are the values of the sources. Vs is, what was that? 40 volts with 25 degrees, and the current source was 10 amps with 65 degrees. How do I know it's degrees? Because the calculator is in degrees on the top. Check. Vs is 425, Is is 1065. Let's go back. Let's write now the equations. There, those equations. CTL. Why do I label my equations? Because it's convenient. That way I can make reference to them in a way more compact manner later on. That's CTL. This KLCL1. VSVN1. Why do I call the voltage in the notes VN1 and not just V1? Because V1 is a reserved name for the calculator. Later on, I'll show you my preferred way for labeling unknowns in this calculator, which is not this one. And KCL2 is whatever it is. I'm just typing whatever is there that we wrote in the previous line and I have um, duplicated on this screen for the benefit of the viewer. That is KCL2. V and 2 divided by 4. We're ready. Because Sol delivers their solution as a list of values, I will drop that exit, the output of Sol, into the predefined list variable L0. Take those three equations, Sol for VN1, VN2, and IX, and the values are those. V1 is 0, 0 volts. V2 has a complex number for a value, and the current IX, the control current IX, is a negative 14, the real part 
negative 15.5 imaginary part. I am giving a name to the computed value VN1, VN2, and IX. VN1 computed is the first term of the list L0. VN2 computed is the second value, and IX computed is the third value. Why am I defining them that way? So that I can compute things like the current in the voltage source, and now I take what is the absolute value of the current IX, and what is the angle, what is the, what the phase, and that is 21.01 amps with negative 133 degrees. And the power in the source is a voltage Vs multiplied by the conjugate of the current. That is 800 watts. Oh, what about reactive power? No reactive power. Observe. Node 1 is grounded, is zero, so the only thing seen by the source is the 2 ohm resistor. 40 squared divided by 2, that is 800, right? And that is all, my friends. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in our next video.